Hello, welcome to Floyd Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got the monster that is the Revel Master Series uh, Millennium Falcon in 172nd scale. Now, as we all know, this is the legendary uh, kit by um, Fine Molds. Now, this particular kit has been going on eBay for, I've seen, as much as £500. Um, it has never been cheap, but unfortunately, it's still not very cheap because this thing is £275 full price. I'm sure you'd be able to find it online a lot cheaper. But you do get, as you can see, quite a big box with it. Uh, it is a big box, it is a big kit. Okay, so what we do is have a good look around the kit and also we can look at some of the details compared with some of the newcomers that are on the market now, such as the Bandai 1 in 144. So, um, to be honest, there's not much to look on the box because the back of it is, as you can imagine, just this cardboard. Down here at the front, uh, we've got it here. This is still sealed. On the sides, you've got a little bit uh, pictures just down there showing you some of the details with it. And if we just grab the knife, we'll just slice this open. Because as I say, I haven't been in here before. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how we will have it okay so the lid let me get that off nice to see we've got proper box tops for a change i don't know if that's going to stay there it's a bit wobbly is it close enough hopefully there's no glare on the camera okay so as we can see we have uh, the top there showing the actual model in its completed state as you can see right the way through very nice so nice little images which obviously you can take your cues from weathering and the bits and pieces like that and the damage as you can see on the actual model so we'll take that inlay card off and again, this gives you an idea of the scale of this thing, how big things are, uh, the plastic. All the plastic seems to be in that sort of fine molds uh, colouring. So as we can see, when you look at the bags, it just says made in Japan. These are the fine molds, everything just in a different box. Okay, so that's actually how they've done it with this one. It tends to be that same yellowy, creamy uh, coloured plastic. It's very sharp and everything else. So if we start with the book and i am going to say book because it, i think it's going to be literally a book uh, so i think what we're going to have to do is put that down there because it's big and we'll get the bits out a time at a time right if we just drop this camera i'm going to drop come on down just a little bit there we go back so as you can see rebels normal way of doing it with the instructions as fine molds would do it, okay? So we've got the crew, as we all know, uh, right the way through. Obviously your hand painting skills do need to be uh, a little bit clever to go through and do all of that. You've got your paint call outs, your various bits and pieces just down in here. To be honest, there's no proper call outs for them. Um, you know, obviously fluoroquil white springs to mind for the colors for these. Anyway, usual thing, starting off down in the cockpit, uh, the flight yokes, things like that, going through, making up your cockpit section, fitting the crew, obviously, however you want to fit the crew, okay, and then we've actually got the, the cockpit area that comes out the side uh, and goes through, the collars for how it all fits in, so obviously detailing those uh, on both sides as well. And then we're going to be moving in and you're actually putting in the actual framework of this particular guy right the way through and the details onto the actual cockpit uh, side of it. Okay, then we're going in with the uh, the famous knocked off uh, ray dome or communications array off the top. Then it's working in for the actual turrets again, nicely detailed uh, with the actual dishes in clear molded all down the bottom. Then we're coming up the top and we're doing the actual docking collar. Okay, so they've got that one going through, right the way through, the details being added all there. And then depending, obviously, you're going to be going in flight or down. We've actually got to put the landing pads right in there, as we can see. Then we're over to the other side, more pads going through the bigger ones. And then this is the actual door. Uh, sorry, it's the upper hole uh, front section. It's quite nice to see the little map there right the way through. So all the details being added to it, which then make it pop and bring it to life. Okay, and then obviously we've got more details going through and more of them on both sides of it. So lots of parts building up, very reminiscent to the real thing. Uh, then we're going off to the actual the uh, upper upper hole on the right hand side, right the way through, and again all the parts being uh, fitted, put on, uh, and all the details added. Then we've actually got um, I think these are just the upper sides uh, from there. Again, lots of little put of parts being put onto these, and this is what this is all about. It's all about adding these little details right the way through over it. Okay, and then we've got some of the actual uh, inlay areas being put together and going on there and as you can see more of it going right the way through we've got the veins for the exhaust for the engine system being put in 
all the different parts, all the bits around the back. And then obviously we've got these guys talking about removing holes and various things for the grills, uh, for the exhausts on the top, the engine vanes, things like that, the nozzle-y type areas around the back of the hull. And as you can see, a lot of it is built up by adding small parts onto this. So it's not a quick build. Now I say I have built this kit. I can vouch for it. It's actually a very, very nice kit. Okay, right the way through, as you can see, lots more of these parts being done in sections, which is a really nice touch, because that way you don't sort of get out of step with it all. I'm putting those all down and in, as we can see, absolutely everywhere. Carrying along, starting to put some of the internal bits in as well. But you can see it's all about this kit, adding all the extra bits that make the surface detail because they're all sort of separate parts, the piping, all the bits and pieces. Screwing it down, so obviously you get these little uh, small self-tapping screws which basically pop down and hold the two whole halves together right the way through. Then it's working on the actual the set section, the sandwich in between, the filling if you like, right the way around. So same thing again, loads of those all the way around as you can imagine. We've got the access boarding ladder system being put in there uh, and all the details and then same with the other parts. This is the nice bit here, you get the stand, so obviously you can do it. I think the stand has always been a bit too big and too heavy, I would like to see a more refined stand for it, but then that's not too bad to actually put one in. Down on the bottom, you can actually recreate the famous scene of all running on board, so you've got a couple of stormtroopers, you've got Luke, Han, Leia, all down there as well. Okay, so you can put that in. Then you've got obviously the weathering and the color markings, which obviously we can see down in there, and the bottom view and then we've got some more photos of the real thing on there. Disappointing this isn't in colour. I thought Revel might upgrade it, get a couple of colour pull-outs. out. Obviously you've got them on this bit to use some of your cues from weathering. I know everyone's going to be, you know, I'm as big a hardcore Star Wars fan as the next person, but it still would be nice to see from people who aren't a little bit more about how the colouring is. Black and white never is going to show it anyway. And when you're charging 275 for a kit, I'd expect the manual to be, well, a little bit of a colour in there would be nice. And I'd like to see it in the new style as well. We know what we're doing. Obviously, we're using the fine moulds one, but you'd think Revel would redo it, seeing as then they're reboxing it. The only thing that is really nice with it, I do have to say, is that at least Revel have, it does say down here, a fine moulds model kit. So they are openly about it that it isn't theirs, it's someone else's, which is a nice touch because let's face it, a lot of people won't do that. Right, so we've also got the decals. Oh, don't slide underneath. So the decals themselves, just like the fine moulds with the other one, they are weathered in, which is a very nice touch. Okay, so hopefully you can see just down in here, we've got them where you can actually see they are chipped and weathered and just got some damage and scuffs and various bits and pieces on them, which is enough to really give you a very nice looking uh, Millennium Falcon by using the decals instead of having to weather it a different way because it's quite tricky trying to do stuff onto decals. Uh, so they've sort of taken that the easy route for you. So that's quite nice. So no problem with those. Beautifully done. Right, the kit, really important bit. So I'll tell you what, let's start with the lower in bag one. So these are sealed. Hoping they might be taped or something. In here, that's slicing the front off. So, first up, we have the bag. So, this is your poly caps and the actual the screws which screw this entire thing together. It's actually quite a nice touch to do it that way because otherwise, you know, it's a lot. And to, to try and get it to pull in and handle it's a lot of pegs. This way, you can screw it and you'll have no problem with it. So, in bag one, as you can see, strong crisp plastic it's not to be honest revel softly done all the rest of it this is you can hear it it's really strong very crispy very sharp okay so generally looking around as you can see it just stand in here looking beautiful and then if we pick out some of the the more refined details so down here starting at the front you can probably see we've got some nice plating some various bits and pieces going off of all the detail remember there's so much more that's going to be added that's what all these little holes are everywhere these are your locating points for adding all of that detail right the way over here so this is like the first stage as we're going through uh, right in. So uh, this is the uh, the later version of the Falcon where they added more feet to it. Okay, so this actually has got the five pad set instead of the three. All right, so again, 
all the different areas, the various things. It's clean, it's crisp, it's sharp, no problems whatsoever. From in the inside, you can see the actual screwing points, uh, lugs and the various things as they're working around. No problem with that at all. There's no sign of flash, damage, sink marks or anything, and that is fine mold for you. Fine molds, it is, as they say, a very fine mold. You'd never find a problem. They're also their sink marks and uh, ejector pin marks, things like that, tend to be extremely fine. So um, you never have a problem, and they tend to hide them out of the way. Very, if you're Bandai, fine molds, very close, okay? So no problem with that. I like that, that's very nice indeed. Right, okay, upper, and we've got the stand. Stand, I'm not too worried about. Now, this is the interesting part I was going to show you. As you can see, hundreds of dots all over this. This is where all that detail is going to be added and it's all going to be put down and it's going to run around everywhere. So don't think these are air holes or like a bad molding or anything. This is just all the detail you've got to add, which is actually quite a nice touch. When you were doing things with the Bandai, a lot of it is molded in. Very clever molding the way that you've done it, okay? This, a bit more old school, flat molds and goes in just because of its age and everything else. But generally looking over it, it does look like it's got issues but it doesn't, it's just where everything gets added onto this. And this is where you're gonna be spending 90% of your time is adding all that details. It's a very long, laborious job. Don't get me wrong, you put a film on, usually a Star Wars film, and you can run through it quite quick, but be prepared for a few nights work just putting all this detail on, cleaning up the parts, putting them on, uh, and everything else. So if you don't mind things like that, you'll love it, okay? Again, down on the inside, usual thing, no sign of flash, problems, injector pins, and all the rest of it. Everything is very nicely hidden. Again, it gives you an extremely strong, if I can get these to do this, how many times have I done this when I've been building this kit? Okay, but it should, if I can get it to go, it all does line up because of the very nice screw holes. There we go, down in there. And that gives you the size. And even when you put this thing together, just like this to mess around, because as modelers, we all do it, okay? It is a nice solid lump. It's no problem with it at all, okay? Really, really nice, okay? So that's those parts done. The stand, which we'll gloss over, to be honest, because it's nothing short of not nice. It's big, it's bulky, it's a lot of weight, this thing, when it's done, but I think the stand could be done a lot, lot better. Okay, so. What you're gonna find when you come into doing this kit is big bags like this. Now, unfortunately, there is no real way around these guys. Okay, so what we've got down in here is two bags. Okay, so if I remember rightly, we've got, this is a triplicate. This is all a, yes. Okay, so you're gonna get three of these in here. So if we just have a, look around okay so if we just pop this down in here there we go so having a look around the parts as you can see beautifully done very nicely molded very crisp no problem with them at all all the parts right the way through down to the activators these are for the actual the engine down the back uh, the little blades for it and all the things like that as you can see they are extremely fine down to the pads very nicely done and then down here on the other side, this is your exhaust vents up at the top, okay, and the grills for the top as well, and then the pads right the way through. Again, no sign of flash, no sign of mist molds or anything, as you can see on the sprue whatsoever. And then even down here on the blind side, when you look at it, very nicely done, no problem with any of these parts at all in any way, shape or form. They are very, very nicely done. Again, minimal cleanup with these. They come off the sprue very easily. It's quite a nice crisp plastic, so a snip with a pair of snips. Uh, minimal cleanup with a knife, uh, and away you go. But again, they say three sprues of those. Then down here we've got the docking collars and the weapons pits, or the gun pits, and things like that. So we just have to be a little bit careful how this one comes out. So again, Okay, as you can see, just standard, very, very nicely done, no problem again. Looking down, no flash, no anything on any of the parts, and we've got some very small parts 
down on here. Okay, so obviously the big thing you can notice is this guy here, so obviously for the gun, uh, down off the bottom, and with all the small parts, we've got the seats. A little bit of a sink mark if you want to get picky down there in the seat, but if you've got somebody sat in it, no problem. The gunner's seat, no problem with that at all. Very nicely done, right the way through. The actual laser cannons themselves, very nicely done. They are that sort of pom-pom gun effect down on there nicely done very nicely detailed and then all the small parts to go through the window system obviously for looking through with the gun and everything else again very nice clean sharp no flash around it whatsoever okay and all the other small bits again nothing at all very little sign of burring you do get a little bit of burring with it don't get me wrong but it's not bad it's a good sandwich mix but even right down to these little spikes down here some of the smaller parts the tools then obviously we've got the wells things like that again even on the blind side very nicely cleanly molded it's a nice crisp mold with these no problems at all okay so again nicely done and then we got the mirror for the top side because obviously they just mirror each other top and bottom all right so that's those down in there just like that so again i can't see any problems with it a little bit of flash on the mold but uh, nothing you'd ever get excited about. But again, it's just a duplicate. It is the nice thing when you're doing the Falcon because a lot of it does mirror. So, you know, with gun decks and things like that. Okay, this is where you start pulling your hair out because you're gonna get bags and bags and bags of all the little bits. So, again, we have a, a mirror set because again you've got left and right sides of it and things like that so actually what you've got down here is the docking collar quite a basic one of doing it and obviously some of the side parts various areas down in there the side skirts the ramp bits uh, and all the parts as you can see down here now i haven't built this for a few years now and it's amazing so i'm looking back at it and i'm thinking don't remember that but the thing is when you get so many bits i think it's quite hard to forget where you've been but again as you can look around and have a close look at the mold very nicely done clean crisp if you've never built a fine molds model before uh, they are definitely well worth it they are very very nice no problem with those at all and obviously we've got a complete mirror again for the left and the right hand sides right this is the cockpit area so, this thing there. has to happen one day Okay, so in these parts we've actually got the, I'll tell you what we do, the, the neck first. Okay, so there we go. There's the necks looking very, very nice. Some very nice details down there. The ribbing texture, part of the forward, uh, the actual cockpit set itself. The cockpit itself inside, to be honest, is very boring and very, very bland and everything else. But, you know, again, you could liven that out. Um, we'll talk about aftermarket in a moment. And genuinely, as you can see, extremely crisp molding very much with these parts the location tabs the plugs and everything else like that the rear wall of the actual kit itself and some of the smaller parts instrument panel things like that down on there and then down on the inside as you can see it's pretty bland down inside the neck uh, and all the different areas uh, generally not too bad at all easily livened up right the way through okay and then we've got the further details these are some of the wells obviously the the holes in the front down here for the various generators and things like that that's these guys as you can see very nicely detailed lots of parts down there all the different areas around the top the actual bigger ones how they go down the back with the piping and again don't forget you're going to be livening up and redoing and then down here and that's those at the top sorry and then down here we've got the other ones with all the smaller parts the various pits that are going to go down there and we have the actual uh, ramp system and that's the back of the ramp okay so that's the access boarding ramp down into the falcon itself and then right the way through so very nicely done on that again no problem on the back very shallow uh, pins or recessed pins and nothing to worry about they are all completely out of the way all right so that's nice We'll do those last actually, and then what we'll do. Okay, so following on from that, we could have definitely some of the bigger ones, some of the bigger chunky ones, nice detail, loads of detail down here, absolute tons of it. All the different parts running across the top, and then down here we have the other ones which are slightly more recessed, the different areas in. The old famous radome, 
or communications array uh, dish on the top, all the parts that are going to go and make up with that, and then all the other bits and pieces, as we can see, right the way around all of this. Very nicely done indeed. No problem with those. Then we've actually got the, the rear uh, mounting section. And as you can see, it's a big old sprue with this one with the curved and with the inlay. So we've got all the exhaust that I've got to go down there, all the nozzles. Then this fits on the front and then puts all of those in. And as you can see, definitely looks like a gearbox to me out of something. Transmission tunnel <laughs> from something that they've used down in here. Okay, and all the parts, as you can see, running around. Very nicely done on this. No problem whatsoever beautifully done and it's amazing really as i say i haven't built this kit for many many moons but you're looking at the details down in here it is absolutely exquisite beautifully done very very nicely done okay then we've got the the clear butt the bits and pieces okay so there we go beautifully done we've spoken about fine mold clear stuff before and i always maintain they were always my favorite for clear parts because they always are beautifully done, crystal clean and sharp. And that's the thing as well, when you're dealing with this, I know it's 172 scale, but the smaller scales as well, their stuff is so clear, it gives that impression of it being bigger. Okay, so generally really, really nice with all of those, looking the part very, very much. Okay, and then finally, we have the crew. <laughs> Okay, so as we can see, we've got the crew in various stages. So we've got Leia, Chewie, C3PO, and then obviously we've got in different poses and things like that, but we've got um, obviously standing and sitting. So we've got Luke, oh, that's Ben, it's supposed to be Ben, um, right the way through. But say different positions of crew. Stormtroopers. Again, it's very crude, but we are talking small here. Posable hands, guns, various bits and pieces, and then some more of the lining work for some of the pipe work and the smaller pits just down there like that. Okay, so there we go. Is it worth 275 quid though? At the end of the day, if you want a detailed 172nd scale Millennium Falcon, then yes it is, because it is your only chance uh, of actually owning one so far we do know there is others in the pipework and coming out are they going to come out cheaper are they going to be better my only comparison i can put it to is to this guy now this guy here is something we built uh just before christmas uh, and we gave him this one the very heavy weathered uh, and everything else this is the bandai one now bandai have taken over the the sort of mantle um, of really bringing out Star Wars stuff. There is beautiful stuff. Now, the rumor mill says that this is coming out in 172nd as well. I can't confirm or deny that, but if they do, the detail on this and the way that this goes together, if it was upscaled, would be fantastic. But, and this is where the butt comes in. This thing, when it's detailed, was an accurate representation of the Falcon. This obviously is as well, but the details down here can't actually be improved. All right, so what we're really looking at is just the way that it's done. Bandai, we know when they put kits together, they do it in incredible detail, like some of this pipe work down the outside, some of the various small parts you can probably see down here on this kit are absolutely nothing short of jaw dropping and amazing. Okay, and we've done a full build on this. So if you do want to see the full video build on this and painting and weathering it and everything we did with this one, then please pop along to the site and you can see that. In fact, there's a part of it that's free to watch as well as a 30 minute section on it. Okay, but it depends on your modeling skills again. If you're a true die-hard modeler and you like to do all the pipe work and all the bits and pieces, then I think this is probably your kit to go for. If you're a modeler who wants to upgrade and let's face it, there is upgrade stuff available for this on the market. Small little cottage industries will sell you everything for this thing over the years, from the, uh, the the exhaust on the back here, the cooling radiators, things like that, through to the nozzle at the back. There's lighting kits available for it. There's cockpits kits available for it and everything else. But it's one of those kits. It lends itself quite nicely to scratch building. I know guys who have taken the back off and had it as an open display and built a full interior inside it, you know, which are absolutely exquisite. There's a lot of playing room in this particular kit to do various things with it. So if you wanted a long-term super project, something else like that, this is a kit to go for. It's beautifully done. It screws together. It goes together extremely well. As I say, I can vouch for it. I've built it. 
it's a dream. It just takes a long time putting all the pipe work in and things like that, where the Bandai one comes with it already in here, or bigger sections that you put down and it completely adds the detail. For instance, all of this section down here on the back of the Bandai one that we've done here, a lot of these are separates, and some of this pipe work going over here is separate, but there's probably only five or six bits in this entire section. The rest of it is all pre-molded in. A lot of this stuff down in the actual scoops down here, the things like that, and all the other areas on this guy are all pre-done. Okay, so you don't have to worry about them. Yeah, they are already there. This guy, you're gonna to have to physically put them in. What drawbacks to it? There's a lot of cleanup. There's a lot of bit of, but there is a lot of burring between the parts that need to be cleaned up and taken care of. So it's a long, laborious job, but I have to say, I do recommend it. It's one of those kits where it's an all time, timeless kit. I don't think it can be particularly well improved on because if Bandai brought one out in that scale, you know it would have half the part count, probably quarter the parts count. You know the Bandai one will go together better but it's not gonna improve on the overall shape of it because I'm pretty sure that is a very nice, accurate representation of the Millennium Falcon. Now, I know the rivet counters are out there are gonna say, yes, but it's missing this, this, and this. I'm just talking generically for somebody who doesn't really care, okay? But from my point of view, it is still my firm favorite. Is it worth the 275 quid? To me, if I wanted a Millennium Falcon and I would probably upgrade it and spend a, little a lot of time on it and playing with it, then it's money well spent. I was hoping, again, we've spoken about this, this happened yesterday, if you've watched the X-Wing review, this kit would come around, I was hoping that it's gonna be around about 149 quid. That's what I thought it would be. If somebody, as if I was a betting man, I thought it'd be the 159, uh, 150 pounds, uh, British pounds for that kit. When it dropped at 275, my jaw dropped just as quick because Jesus, that makes it just as expensive as all the fine mold ones and the bits and pieces. I was hoping Rebel would be able to do something about that, draw down purely because of their, their reach and everything else. And I think, honestly, Rebel, you've missed the boat. If you brought it down at a keener price point, then I think you'd sell a lot more of these units. I can't imagine a lot of people being able to drop 300 pound by the time you've got the other bits and pieces and paint and various things for it on this particular kit. It's a large investment for something that traditionally is only this big. It's not that big. And if you wanted to, um, and I will just grab it, I thought I had it here already. This here, forget the weathering and the painting and the bits and pieces, is Revel's Snap Type one, which is, I don't know, not very expensive at all. Okay, the details are all pre-molded in. It wouldn't take rocket science and 200 quid in a difference in price to actually reskin this thing and redo all the details and improve on it and go around and do the bits and pieces. And that's why we did this one because we thought we might do it. I haven't had time to do it, honestly. But there you go, that is your options. Bandai, it's gonna cost you around about, I don't know, 50 quid for that particular kit for a beautiful representation of the Millennium Falcon in 144 scale. Your other option, to be honest, at the moment, is to go down, obviously, with the 172nd scale in the fine molds or the Revel one, or you've got the Snap Tight one, which I think, with some work, could turn out really well and save you a small fortune. So it just depends which way you're gonna do it. Looking ahead, we do know Bandai have got another one up their sleeve. Well, we're led to believe they've got one up their sleeve. Dragon have got one up their sleeve as well, but I think that's in 144. It's because Dragon is getting on with it with the kits. They've got Atats and various things coming out as well. But generally, if you are 172nd, that is your kit.